What is up everybody, my name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi the Brand. Today we're going to create an e-commerce website design in Adobe XD. We're only going to focus on the front page, but I will also show you the wireframe, the plan, the branding, and at the end of the video, I will show you how I created the logo as well. If you're interested at developing this website, this is what we'll be doing in the next video using WordPress and WooCommerce. Before we begin, if you find the video useful, please consider subscribing, hit the bell notification button, smash the like button, and if you have any comments or suggestions, please comment below. And now let's jump on the computer and get started. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. In front of me, I have my home wireframe, which is a desktop version. And on the left side here, I have a little bit of branding guidelines and a plan. Now let's have a look at some of the branding styles. And as you can see, I've kept this very, very minimal. I have four colors. And in fact, we're mainly going to be using those three colors. This is going to be our primary color. This is going to be our secondary color, mainly for our typography. And this will be used for things like separators. And last, this is going to be used for the sale, promotion, offers, and so on. Here on the left side, I have a heading one, which is Nunito 38 and Bolt. And underneath, I have the body text, which is Poppins 16 and set to regular. Of course, it's nice to have a few different headings like heading two, heading three, heading four. But in this design, I'm probably going to end up just using one. And later on, I might just finish this off and create the rest. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is that if you go to a library here on the left side, you will see that I've already added the colors so I can easily reach them and use them throughout the design. And I've also add the characters. And to do this, usually you just select the colors and you press the plus sign here. And it's not available because I've already added the colors. And it's the same for the fonts. You can just select them and press the plus and it will add them in here automatically. Which means that if I ever change my mind later on, and let's say I wanted to make the heading a little bit bigger and I change the global style from here, it will change on the whole layout, which is pretty useful. Now, let me quickly walk you through the plan. Now, the plan is fairly simple. We want this website to be to have an engaging website design. I'm going to show you how we can do that. We want to have a great about us page, ideally with contact details, address and social media. Uh, this uh, in this tutorial will probably going to skip this uh, because we're just going to focus on the homepage, but it's definitely beneficial to have a strong about this page. That's why I added it in here. And then we want to have offers, excellence, online support, which I'll show you how we can achieve as well. We can have popular payment options, blog for SEO is great to have, product reviews, SEO friendly, or if site needs to be SEO friendly, so we need to think about this as well. It might be nice to offer free shipping uh, just to compete with bigger uh, websites. We also need a way of grabbing emails. We need high resolution photos. We need some offer incentives, encouraging social sharing, and we need um, we obviously need some legal stuff like refund policy, copyright, and so on. I usually like to create a design and then iterate, iterate, and iterate until I come up with something that looks fairly good. Okay, now this is the plan. And let's have a look at the wireframe now. The wireframe is fairly simple. You can either do the wireframe in here in Adobe XD, just like I have, or you can do your wireframe on a piece of paper like many people prefer. The reason I'm using Adobe XD is because if I change my mind, I can always drag stuff around and, and just modify my layout the way I want it. So that's why I prefer Adobe XD. And once I have an idea of what I want to design, it's usually nice to have the content that is going to be used for the real website instead of using Lorem Ipsum. So definitely do that if you can. So let me quickly walk you through the wireframe and then we can start designing. In order to create engaging website design, I decided to have a big hero image and also maybe this could be a slider. On the left side, we're going to have the heading, a little bit of description and a shop now button. 
on the right side, we're going to have an image. We can also have one of them pop-up chats, which are quite useful for customer support. And this is how we can offer great, excellent online support. And also, as you can see at the top, we have easy way of getting in touch with the company. So phone number, email address. And here on the right side, we have some offer in incentives such as free EU shipping, 30 days money back guarantee, 24 seven customer support. And below this, we have a logo, we have a search bar and we have the car. This is all good. After this, we have our menu. I've already added some of the menu items that I want all products, food, accessories, toys, care, and special offers. Let's scroll down and have a look at the rest of this stuff. This is going to be a section that we want to push the popular products. We're gonna have a little bit of a description in here, and then we're gonna have a product image, description of the product, price, and add to card button. After this, we have categories, and I wanted to break the layout a little bit. Inside here, we're gonna have, again, description, and then we're going to have a few different categories such as toys, food, care, accessories and sale. Of course, we can always move this around later on and see what we can come up with. Special offers is going to be exactly the same as popular products. We're just going to pull the special products and a little bit of description products just like above. Now let's move on to the next section and this will be the footer. In the footer, we're going to keep it quite minimal. We're going to have about section, company section, and keep in touch. In the about section, I've just added a few things as a demo. We're probably not going to develop absolutely every single page because that would take far too long. But ideally, you would want to have shipping, deliveries, uh, return exchanges, affiliates, if you do, um, that brand as ambassadors, or story, FAQ, terms of service, refund policy. And under the company, we can have about this, privacy policy, terms and conditions, contact us. And inside here is uh, ways of grabbing emails and also encouraging people to share the website on social media. So we're gonna have a few different icons for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. And then at the end, we want the copyright and we want some payment methods that people can use. Now, this is the plan. I'm going to leave this and I'm just going to double click on the artboard and now we can duplicate it and we can start designing. I'm going to move this artboard around here just so I have it. All right. Okay, let's start from top to bottom and we'll work our way down. But before we do this, it's nice to have some sort of a grid for this, just so we know how big our website is going to be. And I'm actually going to base this nearly on Bootstrap. So what I'm going to do is double click on the artboard and then show the grid. The grid that I'm going to be using is a little bit different than the standard one that Adobe XD shows you. And also I forgot to say that this artboard is 920 and the height is just random at the moment, but it's fairly big. It's 4,296 at the moment, but we can always adjust the height later on. For the grid, I'm using 12 columns. The gutter width is set to 16. Column width is 6 to 93, and the left and right margins are set to 314 pixels. Now, I've actually made the columns color a little bit lighter than uh, it is here originally, but I'm also going to be removing this from time to time because it sometimes it just gets in the way. And what I can do is let's grab some lines from here. So let's do that. Snip in, snip in. Yeah, let's zoom in make sure that the line is snap snaps right where or grid starts and let's create one more so if we create one more around here i think this one is looking good already nope all right i think this one is looking good now and we can remove the grid just so it doesn't get in the way all right let's start designing from top to bottom First of all, what I want to do, instead of changing the topography, the color on every single element here, I'm going to create one and I'm going to create a component. So let me drag the phone number above here and let's start working on it. First of all, if we open the library, 
I want to choose the primary color, which is this purpley color. And I want to change the font size to be roughly around 14, a little bit smaller than the body text. The body text is going to be around 16. And then I want to add an icon in front of it to make it look a little bit nicer and more interesting. I'm thinking of just adding a circle. So what I can do is let's use the ellipse tool by pressing T on your keyboard and by holding shift and pressing with the mouse button, I can just create a new one. So let's do something like 31 pixels by 31 pixels. And then I want this to be the primary color and let's remove the border. This is looking good. Maybe we can space it out a little bit like so. And also I want the opacity to go down to 20. I think this is gonna look good. And now let's find an icon for this. So we need a phone icon. And to do this, you can use the plugins in Adobe XD. And as of recently, I found this one here, Auto Icon, but I also like to use the Icon for Design plugin, which is pretty good. So let's use this one here. And the reason I'm using this one is because they actually have uh, the most popular icons. So I'm gonna use the Bootstrap one. So let's click on Bootstrap and let's find the phone. So phone, let's drag one in here and let's make it smaller like so. I think this is actually looking good. And the only thing that I want to do is change the phone color to be the primary color. I don't know if this needs to be smaller, but that's looking good to me. Now that I'm happy with this, I can actually select everything and create a component by clicking the plus sign here. And as you can see, this has created a component. Now I can drag the component anywhere on the page and every time I make a change, so let's say we want to make the font a little bit bigger, you'll see that it changes everywhere, which is fairly useful if we ever need to change something. This is good. Let's do the rest of the stuff. So we're going to need the email. So let's grab the email and just replace it like so. Let's copy this and paste and let's do free shipping. Paste. Let's copy and paste. Copy, paste. Let's copy, paste, and do the next one, which is 30 days money back guarantee. And I think we have, and I think that we have one more, which is 24 seven customer service. All right, now that we have our icons, we could select all of them and just make sure that we align them a little bit better like so. And the reason I've, I've stacked them like this is because I want to add the rest of the icons. So let's start by getting all the icons that we need and then we're going to replace those ones. So if you go to plugins, let's search for envelope. This one is looking good. I'm going to be using the outline icons so they're all consistent. Then we can do track. We also want some sort of time for the 30 days money back guarantee. Maybe clock. All right, this will do. And then for the last one, we want a customer service. So maybe some sort of like a user or a person. All right. I quite like this one. So let's start by replacing them. Now, one mistake that I used to do is I used to make every single icon the same width and height. If you do this, especially with those icons, they will look out of proportion. Let me show you what I mean. So if I was to select those two, and if I, if I was to make them exactly the same size, you will see, let me do that you will see that the envelope is looking so much bigger than the truck. And if I was to do maybe the circle, I mean, the circle is not so bad, but the truck is definitely out of proportion. I'll probably have to do the truck something like this and that'll look a lot better. So definitely don't set the same width and height for all icons. Saying this, let's start with the envelope. So I'm going to cut the envelope, go inside here, paste it, 
and movie inside and let's just base it around the phone so something like this would do as long as it's like in the middle sometimes you might need to mess around with the pixels so they kind of like it snaps better in the middle but let's save some time and keep on going so yeah this definitely doesn't look in the middle to me uh, this looks a little bit better now and then for the free shipping let's grab the truck make it a little bit smaller um, maybe even smaller I think this will look good so let's go in remove this one save the truck and we're good I don't know if this needs to be aligned slightly to the left maybe um, okay 30 days money back guarantee let's do the same Can you see how this is like so much more to the left? And I think this is because we probably just need to make it slightly bigger. Okay, yeah, this is look, looking good now. All right, and then the last one is going to be the 24-7. So let's grab that and make it much smaller. Like so, I think this is gonna look good. Let's remove this, save our little person. And this is nice. Okay, this is pretty cool. Now that we have them done, what we can do is, they were grouped by the way, but what we can do is start placing them around. Let's remove these ones. So we have free shipping around here. We have 30 days guarantee around here. And definitely don't want to lose this one. Then we have the customer service. So let's remove it. And do that. All right. Obviously, they're not aligned at the moment. But what we can do is let's grab both of the icons on the left side here. Uh, we can align them to the left if we want. With Bootstrap, there might be a little bit of padding. We'll see how it goes. Let's grab both of those items, the phone number and the email. Let's make sure that they're aligned to the top like so. And let's group them. To group them, you can press Ctrl and G or Command and G on your keyboard. And then we can use this stack option in here. That would basically give us the option to space the elements around. And also that would give us the option to vertically stack them if you wanted to do the mobile version as well. So I'm going to leave them stacked and I don't know why this is going that way. Strange, uh, but yeah. I'm going to leave them stacked like so and then at some point we we'll, might have to change the spacing. Actually, that's not looking too bad. All right, this is all good. Let's do the same for those three icons. So what I'm going to do, grab all of them, align all of them, Ctrl and G to group, and then stack them. The stack will be 30 pixels in between, and then we can move them to the left. This is looking fairly good. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is we probably need to have this section a little bit smaller than it is. So I'm going to go with something like 50 pixels. So let's do... 50 pixels like this and you can keep this background if you wish to align stuff but what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to use this line here that we've created in fact let's create a new line so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this guide here and I'm going to create another line using the line tool and then let's just change the line color to the color gray from here so if we Get the color picker like so okay we can now remove this box and that box would have been actually useful to center stuff so what we can do is we could keep this box just have it as white put it all the way through if you wish and just with con control and left bracket just send it to the back and we could potentially just use this now to center align stuff in the middle in the middle like so all right i'm pretty happy with this we can also group this 
section like so and now we can move around if we need to. One thing that I'm noticing is that there might be a little bit too much space between the items but it's okay we can always iterate which is part of the plan as you can see. In the next section we have the logo, a search bar and or cart. All right, let's now add the logo and I'm going to grab it from here, copy and paste. And if you wish to know how I made the logo, I will show you at the end of the video. It will be timestamped so you can quickly skip to that part if you wish. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, like so, and center align it and that would do the job. Now let's create another rectangle just so we can measure how big our heading is and at the moment I'm thinking I'm thinking of setting the heading to be roughly around 80 pixels in height so the logo might be a little bit too big we'll see let's have a look yeah let's make the logo a little bit smaller like so we can always adjust the later on and then we can move this line here to the top like so and we need to change the color as well. So let's select this one here. Actually, we can select it. We need to grab the color picker. All right, that's looking cool. Um, of course, we're going to have to move the search and we're going to have to move the items. I think this is going to be cool. Not sure whether the logo needs to be a little bit smaller, but let's leave it for now. So I'm going to actually drag this square as well. And the reason is just so we can have it as a section and we can send the stuff uh, with this square but definitely don't need it in fact but yeah definitely you definitely don't need it so let's move it to the back i'm sending it to the back with control and the left bracket and we can definitely group this in a minute but before we do this let's finish the search and for the search bar i'm gonna keep it fairly simple the search bar i want it to be roughly around even this would do i think 47 and now let's make the corners round by clicking on the box and then selecting those circles in here and you can just drag them and that would make the search box round and also i want to make this a little bit smaller than it is now maybe around 500 pixels i think 570 looks good to me and also I want to change the border so let's select the box again and let's color pick this color from here the gray color and that's looking good and also let's change the topography so I'm gonna click on the topography choose the poppins font and I want to make sure that this is not so prominent I want when we start typing the text will be that kind of color but just so it's not too destructive I want to make sure that this is maybe we can use the same uh, color as here i don't know this is too much maybe a little bit darker something like this would do and also i'm going to make this a little bit smaller i think like 14 and make sure that everything is just middle aligned like so and let's just say search the store Okay, our search is now done. We definitely need to group this. One more thing that we can do to the search, we can either add an icon here or we can leave it empty. I do like the minimalist uh, design without the icon. So I'm tempted to just leave it to be honest. But yeah, normally you'd have an icon which you can click here, but most people just type and press enter. So yeah, let's leave it as it is. So I'm gonna select this search box and select the text by holding shift and then control and g to group them and we might as well make a component of this just in case we want to reuse it later and by the way i don't know what to name this but uh let's say we can do this this could be named as offer incentives and this could be named as search like so let's close this and now that we've grouped the search bar we can actually select the search bar select the box below it and we can center line it and center line it just in case it's not and now looking at the logo i mean the text could potentially go down a little bit um i don't know 
yeah i think this is looking a little bit better anyways let's continue and let's do the card now for the card let's open the library again let's choose poppins 16 and this is already looking nice to me actually so i'm gonna move this to the side and let's just add a nice icon so let's go back to the plugins and then the icon can be card so let's have a look at which card we can use oh, okay this one is the one i like so let's throw the bag in um okay this is the one i like actually this is the one i was looking for it's actually bag it's not a card or a basket so let's make this a little bit smaller get the color from the color uh, from the color palette in here and let's just move it to the side yeah this looks already so much better and i'm not sure whether they need a little bit of space potentially but these are the things that we can always iterate on and change so what i'm going to do is select both items make sure that they're center aligned Control g to group them and i'm gonna by holding shift i'm gonna press the background shape here and make sure that they're middle aligned as well and we're pretty much done with those two sections now let's focus on the menu for the menu i'm thinking of using the primary color so what i'm going to do is with the rectangle tool uh, on your keyboard let's drag a rectangle that goes full screen like so maybe i could have zoomed in a little bit and now what i'm thinking is let's make it around 50 pixels and let's select the primary color which is the purple color and then of course we need to remove the border don't forget to do that and we should be okay i don't think that there is a line in here is there oh yeah there is so there is a line in here which i don't actually want let's remove this line and let's put that to the top all right this is looking good now what i'm gonna do is focus on the items here what i can do potentially we could just grab all of the items select the color that we want i don't know if uh let's we need to put them at the top by doing control and right bracket or shift or control shift and right bracket but this color is doesn't have much contrast contrast in my opinion so i'm gonna go with clear white and this is looking a little bit better but also i want to change the font to poppins so let's do that and maybe we can set it to be poppins 16 and then potentially medium and also we might as well to make it a little bit more readable we might as well just make it make the text uppercase by clicking the button here and that's looking better obviously they are all not they're not equally spaced now and you could use the uh, spacing options in here to horizontally align them but but what i'm going to do is i'm going to group them first of all and i'm going to use the the stack trick that we did before so let's click on stack and that would basically allow us to just easily move them so if i put 20 pixels so i can grab this now and just easily move the icons as much as i want and i'm thinking of giving it around space around 60 pixels maybe let's have a look yeah that looks quite clean to me so let's grab this grab the menu grab the menu solid shape at the bottom and center line all right this is pretty cool we can definitely group this as well so let's select everything Control g all right let me show you something cool quickly and i think i moved the logo actually so let's move it like that that's looking better and what i want to show you is how you can check for contrast so, so for example if i was to grab this old product and let's just leave it here on the side for now and if i was to grab this and select the layer below and if you go to plugins i have this plugin called stack so if you click on the plugin and then you can check the contrast so as you can see at the moment the contrast is good the text is readable everything is good but if i was to change this text to something darker let's go click on the purple and let's make it like i don't know 
something like this. I think that would do. So now if we select the text and the shape below, and if we go back to stack, check contrast, you will see that the colors didn't pass because there is no contrast and it's hard to read. So it's a pretty cool plugin to know about. So let me remove this and we can continue. The menu is now looking good. Let's make sure that it's all grouped. I think it is already, no? Okay, the menu is now grouped, which is pretty cool. And this line is not required. So let's remove it. And we can now focus on our hero image or our slider. All right, first of all, so let's remove some of the stuff. I mean, I already know what I'm gonna have. And let's just have a little bit of space at the top. I think this is roughly around what, 30 pixels maybe. All right, yeah. That's 27 pixels. Maybe we can have it more like that and so on. And let's focus on the actual hero image. So I'm going to shrink this down to fit our guides. Now, first of all, let's start by changing the actual color of the shape. So if we go back to colors, do that. And of course, we will have to change the setting to Nonito. But for this one, I'm going to go with like maybe extra bold and change the color to white. And I definitely, and I definitely want this text to be a little bit bigger than the normal headings. Maybe like, maybe like 48 will do. And we can definitely, for this text here, we can definitely use the Nunito 16, Nunito 16 pixels and just make this as white. And then for the button, maybe we can just drag a shape with the rectangle tool and maybe make it 176 by 36, something like this. And let's add the shop now on top of it. Of course, we need to change the shop now to be Nunito 16 pixels, like so. Let's remove the border and we can add shadows as well. Actually, saying this, maybe we just take it off. And I'm thinking of keeping the actual buttons sharp for this one, but then for the actual hero image, I'm thinking of giving it a little bit of a border, maybe like. 20 pixels like so and of course remove the border color as always so this is already looking good uh the only thing i would do is maybe just mess uh groove those things and maybe just like mess around with the spacing a little bit i mean that that's already looking okay to me we can definitely fix it later and maybe instead of having the uh, secondary color for the button let's go for the primary i think this might work Okay, so let's leave this for now. Let's group all of them like so and save. By the way, that looks, no, it's okay. It looked like it's uh, one pixel outside, but it's looking okay, I think. Let's now focus on making this a little bit more interesting. Now, first of all, let's find a, an appropriate image for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to unsplash.com and I'm gonna go for dog toy. And then let's find one that would suit our style. So I think this one looks quite nice. So I'm going to click on this. And this and this photo is by the linker. And I will definitely include the link in the description and my blog post. So let's download this, save it. And I'm actually going to put this into my working folder. I'm going to create another folder called photos. And paste it in here. So so we're just a little bit more organized. Quickly go back to Adobe XD. And if we copy this layer here, Control and C, Control and V to copy it, maybe we can change the color just so you can see. I'm thinking of dropping the image in here. So it's kind of masked already. So let's grab the dog and drop it inside here. And as you can see, this is already looking good, but, but ideally I'd like to see a lot more from the dog. So I'm gonna go inside and shrink it quite a lot, maybe halfway through. And this is already looking good to me. Maybe we can show a little bit more from the toy and that's pretty cool. So let's leave this. And as you can see, this is already looking good, but we can even, we can take it further and make it even more interesting. And what I'm thinking of doing is if we use the ellipse tool here on your keyboard, and if we drag a big circle, I'm thinking of using this circle 
kind of like kind of like as a mask in here to create a nice effect. So that's looking cool. Definitely remove the border and we're definitely going to have to copy and we're definitely going to have to copy the shape below. So let's move it. Right, that's cool. Paste the shape and we might have to mask it. Right click, mask with shape. All right, now that we've masked the circle, to be fair, now that we've masked the circle, we could go inside and just change the circle color. So what I was thinking of doing is I was going to go for a linear gradient and we could choose the bubble here and then we can maybe choose, I don't know, a lighter purple. Let's just choose the same purple and then let's go lighter. But this is looking cool and maybe we can change the gradient so it goes from like the top left corner to the bottom right corner like so and release. Right, this is already looking good, but I feel like this is taking far too much of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually thinking of moving this a little more until the image, the image is started to kind of like uh, show, but I might have to just make the image of the dog a little bigger. I think this would be pretty cool. All right, this is looking cool. So if you double click on the dog, we just make that a little bit bigger just so it fits. Um, okay. I think this will do the job. Let's have a look. Yep, that's pretty cool. And now if we click on this top layer here, we can go, we can do control and left bracket to send it back. Um, and this is because I wanted to show the text, but now this one is to the top. So we're going to have to send one this. So we're going to have to send this one back as well. And also, I believe that we might as well remove the bottom one. So I'm going to send everything to the back and just remove this bottom uh, shape. Or we can keep this shape for later use if we wish to mask something out. So I'm going to leave this so we don't get the outlines and so on. So this is looking pretty cool so far. Maybe I wish this was a little bit smaller. So we could select everything here and just make it ever so slightly smaller like so. Right. The next thing I would love to do is I would definitely love to like, uh, first of all, that would be nice to be sent. It would be nice to send to this. And I would love to create some sort of a pattern pattern with the dogs. So what I could do is in Illustrator, I could create more dogs like this um, and then maybe create a nice pattern with different dogs in here. But just to uh, show you what I mean, I can get the dogs from the logo and just change the color to something super light. Maybe I wonder, actually, yeah, let's go with something super light and then let's turn the opacity down like so. And I'm going to use the repeater grid tool for now just to like show you what I mean. Obviously this needs to be masked as well. So I'm going to have to do that. Okay, let's do this and then we'll mask it later. So I'm going to have to do it like that and go down. I don't know, this is looking pretty cool. I know uh, it's not the best, but definitely spend a little bit more time uh, on the marketing materials. So I'm, but yeah, um, that's looking really nice, but ideally we're going to have to mask this as well. Um, so what I could have done is I could have taken this shape from here and just let's grab this shape and I could have cut it. So it's a little bit annoying, but let's grab this shape back. So let's copy paste. Let's bring him back. And what I'm going to do is, okay, if we select the circle and the shape at the bottom here, we can actually intersect this. And this will give us the shape that we need for the pattern. Okay, now that we have this shape, we can actually save it somewhere around here, just in case we need it later on. Let's copy the shape and paste it into Illustrator. And actually I need the logo as well. So let's grab the logo, go to Illustrator and paste it. And what I'm gonna try to achieve here is I want to achieve a super quick like pattern. So what I'm gonna do is change the color of the dogs let me groove them to something very light, like so. I'll maybe change the opacity down quite a bit. 
I don't know, something that looks good. Uh, then in Illustrator, we can do object and then pattern and then make. This way we can make patterns. I mean, they're a little bit hard to see because of the color now actually. But if I click done, and if I click on this shape here, I can definitely go to, where is it, where is it, where is it? I think it's, what isn't that switches? New pattern, here it is. So if I click on new pattern, this will actually apply. But of course, the uh, this pattern is so close together. So I'm gonna have to change a little bit. Um, what I can do is make the dogs a little bit smaller, like so, or I can just mess around with the settings in here. Okay, I think this is gonna look okay. So let's leave it as this. And now I can technically cut this and paste it into Adobe XD. And if this works, copy. Oh, paste, here it is. If this works, we can have the pattern. I mean, to be completely honest, is not what I was looking for, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. So we can edit the pattern again. And make them a little bit bigger. And then we can change the grid to bricks. Ah, uh, no, I don't want that. This is looking cool. Um, let's see. I don't know. I think I think that the dogs are far too small. But I need to offset them a little bit more. Okay, this is gonna be better. So let's do this. Yeah, this is looking a little bit better. I mean, again, uh, it's knowing how it's ending here. So let's change that one more time, super quickly. Uh, we're probably never going to win now. All right, this will do for now. Let's copy and paste it and I will finish this later. But that's how I would do a pattern, maybe make it a little bit more interesting and have it somewhere in here, like so. In fact, this is looking pretty decent, I think, and it's fitting the exact sh same shape. And maybe the text is kind of hard to read now, so I would probably go down quite a lot on this, even further, maybe like this. All right, this is looking cool. We have a nice, interesting header. And maybe the last thing, the last two things I want is potentially you could spend a little bit more time on this. Maybe create like a big circle in here saying like up to 20% off. So let's do that super quickly. I'm going to use the red color. Oops. Uh, this red color is definitely not good. All right. I found a better color. So let's use CB0F48. And let's remove the border. And now inside here, we can copy some text. So we can say something like up to, and then let's move that inside here. We can copy paste. This will be 20%. And then we need one more. And this will be off. So now we want to style this a little bit. We're going to use poppins. Uh, poppins and poppins and I'm thinking of definitely make all of them white make them a little bit bigger and bolder so maybe up to needs to be medium or semi bold looks good actually 20% needs to be semi bold looks okay and if we go a little bit bigger uh, this is already looking good just need to have semi boat on this one as well. And I think this is okay. Maybe we can have this one 22 and this one 22 as well. Just so they match. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that they're spaced equally. 
like so and this will do i don't know if it needs a little bit of a drop shadow but that's fine let's just grab everything and control g to group them and the last thing i'm gonna do on this is create either dots or something that can show us that this is a slider so what i will do is i'm gonna do three lines like this so this is gonna be i'm not gonna measure them now but basically you can use dots or whatever so i don't know 30 pixels and then something like that and then make sure you group them and center align them like so so this could work um i think this looks a little bit bigger now thinking about it but yeah Okay, let's change this a little bit to 29 to 3. And let's just add two more. Wait, 22 pixels or spacing maybe. And let's grab all of them. Control and G. And let's just center line them for now. And of course, we could have arrows as well for the slider if you want it to be a slider or if it's just going to be one image. That's absolutely fine as well. Uh, this might need to go up a little bit as well. It's been annoying me for a while. All right, this is looking cool. And the next bit is, the next bit that we can do is this chat, bu uh, chat button. Uh, this is basically going to be one of them live chats. So what I can do is grab this. I don't know how big the circle needs to be here, but as long as it's fairly big to tap on a tablet, that should be fine. And let's choose purple inside here. I'm going to do a shadow, remove the border. And then inside here, let's add a nice icon. So if you go back to auto icon, start this and do chat. Maybe we can grab this one here. Change it to white. You can't see it now, but it's around here. Change it to white, put it at the top and grab everything. Control and G to group. And then we just need to make sure that this is here on the right bottom corner. And this is because this is where the fault happens. So this is full screen usually. So if I play this, sorry, if I start this, you'll see that this is on the right side. And this is, and I also want to make sure that this button stays there as we scroll. So to do this, let's go back and do fixed position when scrolling. I just want to move this a little bit. So let's move it one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Simple like this. So now if I start, you'll see that it looks nice. And if I scroll down, the button stays there as well, which is pretty cool. And we can continue with the rest. The next section that we have is popular products. Hopefully this will be a quick one. Um, what I'm going to do now is, first of all, we need to figure out the space that we want between our hero image and the popular products. I think, generally speaking, I think this is looking fairly clean already. Um, so that's roughly height of 90. Definitely could up it up a little bit. And I think that might work. All right. As long as we stay consistent with this now, I think we should be okay. But yeah, we can always change it later. So first of all, let's go back to the library, select the title and select or from all characters style, select or title, which is Nunito 38 pixels and this blue color here. So that's all cool. We want to make sure that this is center line, of course, and we want to add our description. For this description, this will be center lined and then we're going to go with the poppins, 16 pixels. I know it looks fairly small now, but it should be nice to read. Okay, this is actually looking good. And let's grab both of them and just make sure that they're center lined. I think they are. So that's pretty. Uh, we're actually done with the heading. I wonder whether this is going to get in a way. Probably not. It's probably going to be okay. And now what I'm going to do is let's start creating some of the product. Okay, so now we need to do the products. And what I'm going to do here is actually before we do anything, we could do this as a component because we're going to be using it multiple times. So let's grab this, create a component and leave it. 
Now let's focus on the actual products. We're going to have an image and what I can do for this is let's double click on our artboard and trigger the grid so it shows and we could put we have 12 columns we could potentially have four products on each line we could have it as a perfect square or we could have a slightly larger like that uh, we'll have a look later anyways and of course we're gonna need the title so let's copy let's write some text and in fact we've already got okay let's grab a title for this paste it and i'm going to change the title to be the Nonito 16 pixels maybe we can change the color in a second and let's get the pricing that would be there and the button i'll create in a second so this will be our product i might make the title a little bit bolder so let's do something like medium maybe or even semi bold i think that would look even better then for the pricing let's select the Nonito 16 again and i'm actually thinking of changing this to the primary color and this to the primary color as well and what i can do here is we could potentially have like a sale price and current price so like something like this this could go it was 14 pounds 99 and now is 7.99 and this could be we can cross this by clicking on the text and then selecting the strike through and then let's just change the opacity down to something that you can still see but okay that's looking cool it's, i don't know maybe a little bit more and i wonder whether to make these a little bit bolder i'm not so sure they look good so far and we can definitely put them together with the title like so and i want to have a big button under every single item so let's actually we could grab the button from here oh, i think we need to move this down let's grab the button paste it in here and let's just change it slightly so for the button i'm gonna go with the primary color the text color will be white the text color will be white and i want this to be full width like so so it takes the full width of the actual product and that might be okay so let's drag some products so i actually found a couple of products on aliexpress that we can potentially sell so let's do let's create the products folder and I'm going to copy everything I found and paste it in here. So let's grab this one here. It's like some sort of a plush toy. And let's drag it in here. And also this image has a border that I just noticed. So let's remove this. And we might want to have the consistent um, rounded corners. So we might as well just do 20 and see how it looks. This is quite nice and clean quite like it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove all these and i'm going to trigger the grid back on i'm going to grab this and do a repeat grid so now we can drag and see whether we can fit them okay i think we need to go down a little bit maybe like so is this one it's pretty hard to see now they've turned the colors down but that's looking good and they all fit okay that's pretty cool and potentially when we develop the website we could have it as a slider as well uh we could even have it like full width like so if you wish so i'm gonna have to go like that uh we could do this i'm not too sure i'm gonna stick to the i'm gonna to stick to this one here and decide later now one thing now one thing that i don't like is the spacing between the button i think that needs to be moved down quite a lot maybe like so and now we're gonna to have to extend everything um, yep all right this is looking good maybe this this button seems a little bit smaller maybe like 
give it a few pixels more and just make sure that everything is aligned. All right, this is looking a little bit better now. It's a clean design. Let's remove the grid. Um, to be honest, one thing that I'd probably like to do is change the grid a little bit and have um, a little bit more space between them. But to save a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. So for the, for the categories, let's quickly grab the rectangle tool, have a look at how much space this is. And we can use this to make the next section potentially. Actually, that needs to be moved up. I'm going to move that up a little bit like so. And then we can start doing the categories. So for the categories, let's check all headings component. And the text is exactly the same. We just need to change it to categories. And I've actually forgot to center line this. So let's edit the main component. Let's click, right click, edit main component. And what I'm going to do is convert this to fixed size. I'm going to pull it up a little bit like so. And like so. And then I'm going to center align the text. And now this will help me out a little bit. So let's remove this, add a new one and do categories. Usually I would align the fonts like so uh, on the top. All right, this is actually wrong. What I'm going to do is remove this and this will be where the section actually ends. So I'm going to use this guide and create another rectangle for the next section. And then we can give this rectangle some sort of like a very light white color. So let's go for something like Even something bluish, maybe. I don't know, something like this F9, 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 F9. Go back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this square again just to realign my uh, title here. And we could use the box as well. It's not a biggie. Okay, I've, I've aligned this one. Uh, Let's realign a little bit. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And we need to send this to the back. All right. Now this container is definitely going to be annoying. So if we select it, go to layers and just lock this layer, then it won't, we won't be able to select it. So we can move stuff around, which is pretty good. And we definitely need to figure out spacing between the sections, but this is looking good to me. So I'm going to use this one here. So I'm going to go from, actually, let's go from the box because it's exactly the same. And let's scroll down. Okay. So this is where it's, everything is going to start like so. And maybe we can create another box just so we know where the, uh, thing will end, but, um, but I haven't done the boxes yet. So let's leave this one for now and let's move the special office down with everything else. Okay. Let's now focus on the categories for the categories. So let's double click on our canvas and then let's create three boxes. So let's remove those ones for now. And so that would be four. That's fine. I definitely don't like the space between, but I might have to change this later on just because I don't want to like have to go back and change everything in terms of size. This is looking good. Actually, I like it. So what I can do is I'm going to do the round the corners, double click the 20, remove the border and let's add an image of a product. So I'm going to add the same product here and to make the actual text a little bit more readable, I'm going to use to use the Nonito font now. So let's click on Nonito 38 and then let's just change it like so. And for the title, let's go to the library, double click on the text, go back to the library and press the Nonito 38. I think that would be nice. And let's just change the color to white. As you can see, the contrast might not be very good with every image, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bar in here with the primary color. So let's grab, in fact, let's grab this box here. Now let's grab a rectangle and do one at the bottom here. And let's just change this to the primary color, remove the border, and then let's do the different radiuses for each corner. And I'm going to select the bottom one, do 20, and then the other bottom one, the left bottom one, to 20. And we can now put the opacity to something like 80 or something that's readable, makes it readable, and then just put this at the back. I think this is grouped, so let's ungroup it quickly and go back. Okay, too much. And that's fine. So we can definitely put the title in here. And I would say let's make it a lot smaller, maybe like uh, so we can potentially fit uh, bigger text as well. That's something that you want to, you you might want to think about. Okay, now that we're done with this one, we can replicate it. So let's do repeat grid. Da -da -da. And that was almost there. So we definitely need to change this. I wish I didn't do the this grid. It's not as nice. Uh, but that's fine. I think when we develop the website, it will look nice. Cool. That's looking cool. Then let's change this to food by clicking food. And let's, j let's change this to whatever this was, care. I should have made sure that this is all aligned, by the way. So I could have put the fixed size and shrink it from the left to the right potentially and then center align them. So everything is 100% center aligned. Of course, the images will be nice to change. And I'm thinking, so we have accessories in sale here. Let's grab them and move them away. Let's repeat this one more time. I want to make sure that the space between here and here is equal. So I don't know what this is actually. Does it say, let's have a look. It usually says somewhere. Oh yeah, 16. So this will be 16 as well. Yeah, way too tight. Okay, that, that is way too tight, but in the finished design, I'll make sure that I change the spacing. Now let's ungroup everything here. And to make this a little bit more interesting, Let's put this as accessories first of all. So let's copy the text from here. Paste it and let's remove this. And for the next one, what I'm thinking of doing is remove this and just make this a lot bigger like so. And this will be all sales. Sale, sorry. So this will be all sale. And we can make this a little bit more interesting uh, by putting the cell in the middle and potentially we could create another container on top here and give it a border radius of 20 like so change the color to this red color here and put the opacity down way down but so it's still i don't know that doesn't look too good to me all right something like this might do maybe i need the other red color from here let's grab this one yeah, that would look better to me. So let's remove the grid and let's make this a little bit better. I don't know, actually, it, it, this red doesn't look good to me at all. Uh, maybe we can just wing it quickly. This this one looks a little bit better. Mm, I don't know. I've got another one here. Okay, this one looks a little bit better. A70404, it's looking a little bit better. And let's make this a little bit better now. So we can do, instead of sale, we can make this, oops, we can make this a little bit bigger and do special office. And then we can copy this and do up to 40% off. Let's make this a lot more like so. And we'll have to play a little bit with this to make it look nice. I'm definitely not happy with this color. Don't know why. Right, this might be this might be a little bit better, but I think the spacing between the elements is definitely really annoying at the moment. But that's cool. All right, now that we're done with this, we can definitely change the colors of each section and make it more interesting. But for now, let's just plug in some uh, pictures. So let's say for toys, we can do this one here. 
for uh, care, we can do this one here. For uh, food, we can grab this here. Um, what else? For accessories, we could potentially grab this one here. Uh, but we might need to create a little background on this because, uh, yeah, we might need to give this one a background color and so on. So what I could do is inside here, I can create another shape. I can create another shape, give it a 20 border radius, and then just give it a nice, maybe like dark green than this. Uh, to use this as a background. So let's go with, if I go in, yeah, that would look a little bit better, just so the product stands out. But of course, we can make this product a little bit smaller as well, just like so. And of course, and yeah, feel free to adjust the other images as well and make them nice. All right, we are pretty much done with this section now. Let's measure the space from the top. and to the bottom, just so we have equal space. And let's unlock this by clicking the lock at the top and do that. All right, cool. We're done here. Our next one is special offers, so we might as well drag our heading component and do special offers. Remove this. Align it to the middle. Oh, nothing is aligned to the middle actually. Let's align everything. Okay. So this is aligned to the middle now. And for the special offers, I'm, I'm just going to copy exactly the same uh, thing that we did here. So I'm going to copy these products copy and paste. Make sure that we have a little bit of space. I can't remember how much space it was. So I'm going to have to go back and do that. And I'm happy with this. The products are looking good. We can definitely uh, check in some more interesting images actually. So what is this special office? Let's just check those images and that would be done. And for this one as well, let's just check some images. Like so, of course the title will probably need to be changed, but that's looking good. All right, the next section should be a quick one, which is the footer. So let's extend our page a little bit and then let's start. First of all, let's make a little bit of space again from the bottom, like so. And I'm going to use this. Okay, it's a little bit messy now. Let's move everything first of all. Damn, this is annoying. This is a little bit annoying. We have to move everything, but it is what it is. Then let's go to the top. And I don't know whether this is going to be extreme, but I'm thinking of using the either this color or this color. All right, let's go for the purple one just because it might see the website a little bit better. And then we can make a little bit more space. And I'm going to start the titles from this line here. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. But first of all, let's select everything and make the font white. Okay, the color white. And let's start with this here. So uh, this is going to be Nonito, but I want to make it white. And let's make it a little bit smaller. So maybe like 32 will do. That looks quite nice to me. And this will be Poppins. So let's do Poppins. 
that's looking cool and maybe we can just go for 16 I don't know whether we're gonna need a little bit more space between between every single link so they're easy to click and let's do exactly the same thing for company so what I'm gonna do is you might as well copy the about and this and just paste them in here and just replace company here and this replace this in here cool we just saved tons of time and then the last one is keeping touch so let's copy this and what we can do grab this change it grab this and paste it but now this is maybe far too extreme 25 is probably a good one and let's just do that i think they're all aligned i believe so yep they're all aligned they're all aligned that's fine maybe we just need to move them a little bit at the top like so and i definitely forgot to use the grid i just i bought it so that's why they're all off at the moment but what we can do is open or trusty grid and maybe we can start this one from here and this one from here just like so um actually maybe make this let's start this one from here cool for the next bit let's grab the same spacing from the top and put it at the bottom here so we know that we don't need all this space now uh, we can move the copyright stuff and put it as pop-ins 16 let's do the payment methods which i already have so i'm going to drag them so we just have some random payment methods i don't know if we're going to be using them but these are fairly standard so let's do that for the demo just going to center line it uh, okay and that's not too bad of course we're gonna have to do this uh, this is looking okay i think uh, definitely might need to be centered a little bit better okay now the next bit we can do is keep in touch this is going to be another uh, input so i wonder whether to do the borders let's have a look that might work actually i think that would look quite nice and what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the one from the search bar so let's copy this in fact i could have literally used the search bar to do this uh yeah let's do that so let's grab the search bar what are in here and let's just align it like so and instead of search we'll do we'll do sign up with email sign up with email something like this uh we definitely need a button somewhere um button could be around here but let's leave it for now and for the next bit we just need a few social net a few social network icons so what i'm gonna do is just grab twitter no Oh, it doesn't have Twitter in here, so let's do Font Awesome should have Twitter. Yep, yeah, okay, let's grab this and let's use this Twitter sign. So what I'm going to do is remove the border, make this a little bit smaller, maybe like so. And we could do this as the primary color. And I think that would look nice. So if we had, we'll potentially have uh, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. So what I'm going to do is repeat grid and just repeat a few of them around here for now. But you get the point. Maybe that needs, they definitely need to be much, much, much smaller. Uh, and let's change the... Okay, that's looking a little bit better. We might have to add a button for this. We might, we will need to change the uh, icons for the, the rest of the social media, but let's have a look at what we have so far. Okay, let's start this. So as you can see, the design is looking quite nice and clean. 
obviously we can definitely spend a little bit more time to improve it. I could add arrows with a slider. Uh, definitely could add a slider in here, or we can just display four products, whatever, you know. Uh, then categories, that definitely can be improved a little bit. Uh, I, would, I would love to make some better like marketing materials for this because it's a little bit boring. Uh, and special office is looking good. And then the footer is quite clean. And as you can see, the button, this uh, chat button is following us everywhere. And I'm going to wrap it up here because the tutorial went for far too long. As always, I totally forgot to show you how I done the logo. Uh, this is going to be a super quick example of how I've done it. I've got the branding colors here that I selected for my layout. And I have the main font of, and I also have the Nunito font here. As you can see, Nunito, extra boat, and this is set to 21pt at the moment, but that doesn't really matter as it's vector, we can always scale it up and down. And first of all, what I've done is I changed the this color to be the primary color so I can select it. And then I changed the gang to be this one here. And also, depending on what the domain name is, I was thinking that I can copy uh, some of the text, like, so move it to the right and do, for example, dot shop, or maybe shop with capital letters, and just make this a lot smaller like this to make it look a little bit more interesting, uh, you know, but that's, that's part of it. But in order to make this logo a little bit more interesting, I wanted to put uh, some sort of an icon that I can use. And as you saw on the actual UI design, I had two puppies here, which look pretty cool. And the way, uh, let me show you the way I done this. I didn't put too much energy into this, but the way I've done it is I went to unsplash.com and I found some suitable images of dogs. Okay, basically this is one of the dogs that I found on unsplash.com, link in the description. And what I've done is I unlocked the layer, then in Photoshop, you can select subject with this quick action, or you can just uh, go with the lasso tool or the brush tool to select the object. So I'm gonna select sub subject, sorry. And then as you can see, this has selected the dock for me. So what I can do is in another layer, I want to fill this with black. So I have my foreground set to black. I'm gonna turn this around. So the background is set to black. And by using control and backspace, when I click, this will fill the shape with black. And now what I usually do is if I deselect this, I can actually drag this layer into Illustrator. So let's drag that in. It's a little bit big. So let's move it to the side here. And this is, at the moment, this is a JPEG. But what I've done is I use the image trace option in here in Illustrator. And if you click that, this will trace the image for you and then you can expand it. And then if I double click, I should be able to grab the dog, cut it, let's remove all the stuff that we don't need and just scale it down. So this is the first one that I done and it was like this. And of course, I think I retouched the ever so slightly. I fixed uh, some of these parts by with the lasso tool and then smooth it over just so it's not that rough. And then I believe that I reflected this, so transform and then reflect. Okay, make it a lot smaller, like so. And, and I did the same thing for the other dog. I found an image and then, and then use exactly the same method to do it. So let me just copy the other one from here to save time. And here it is, just like so. And this one needs to go a little bit smaller. But as you can see, I didn't put too much effort into it and it looks fairly decent, I guess. It's not the best, and it looks fairly decent, I guess. And then let's just change the color of this dog, and we're pretty much done. Of course, this could be fixed a little bit better, and this could be fixed a little bit better, but that's how I've done the logo. I hope this helps. 
and thank you very much for watching don't forget to smash the like button subscribe to my channel if you like to see more videos like this and if you have any suggestions or questions please comment below and i will see you in the next video